DFM, DFM Rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suba. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love for Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Here in Fiji, in this bulletin, man appears in court over Lakena bus crash bus driver to appear for bail hearing today and FRCS to improve services. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nath. The driver of the private vehicle linked to the bus accident at Lakina No. 2 Hill in Nosuri faced the magistrate's court yesterday. The accident resulted in the death of two students, Panita Prakash reports. 36-year-old Erema Sitiko Mailotoka from Naisaumua village in Talevu appeared in court five days after the fatal accident. Tiko Mailotoka is charged with two counts of dangerous driving occasioning death, two counts of dangerous driving occasioning grievous bodily harm and one count of dangerous driving. It is alleged that he drove his private vehicle in such a manner as to in effect force the bus to reverse and subsequently tumbled down the Lakena Hill, flipping over, striking the roof of a house. The prosecution informed the court that two students are still in hospital following the accident and said it would object to any bail application for Tikumai Lotoka because the offence is serious. Tikumai Lotoka informed the court that he will seek legal aid assistance and was remanded in custody. The matter has been adjourned to Friday. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Nosuri Magistrates Court will this morning rule on the bail application of the 46-year-old driver, bus driver rather, who was involved in the accident. Shalene Jatan is charged with two counts of dangerous driving occasioning death, two counts of dangerous driving causing grievous bodily harm, and one count of dangerous driving. He was produced in a special court sitting on Saturday and has been in remand since. Jatan's lawyer yesterday said that his client needs to recuperate and he can do that at home also claimed that the client was assaulted while in remand at the cell blocks at the Nosori court yesterday. The matter will be called at 9.30 today. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Service is working to add value to its services, ensuring they, that they better facilitate the needs of taxpayers. FRCS Chief Executive Vishwanath Das says uh, gone are the days where tax authorities are quick to penalize taxpayers, taking on a more advisory role. Das says with the new tax information system earmarked to go live next year, they are working to ensure that they are better facilitators for taxpayers, which in turn will lead to better economic returns. As, as businesses import things, and if the tax administration, the customs, you know, takes uh, you know time and delays, I think it delays the whole economic development. Uh, the sooner things get imported, the sooner things get uh, cleared, the sooner it reaches the shop shelves, the sooner consumers buy it. And then you see, you know, VAT and income tax and everything for it start going up. So multiply effects there. The Consumer Council is warning Fijians to be aware of money lenders who are overcharging interest. Consumer Council Chief Executive Seema Shandil revealed borrowers are hesitant to go to money lenders in extreme situations because of high rates. Shandil clarifies there is a legal rate within which lenders can charge interest, but often take advantage of borrowers' vulnerability and charge higher. The money lenders can only charge up to 12 percent as per the, the act, yes, money lending act. Yeah. They cannot charge anything more than 12 percent, but we have received complaints because, you know, the people need money. They need money for, because they are faced with some difficulties, so they end up to people who are lending money and they agree to pay the interest rate more than 12 percent. However, having said that, they can only charge 12 percent. Post Fiji Limited is reviewing the prices of its services to meet current market rates. The last review was carried out almost seven years ago. Chief Executive Dr. Aniruddha Bansor says Post Fiji needs to get back on track and start making profits. The current charges for postal services are not up to par with international prices, and as a result, Post Fiji is losing on profits. What happens is um, when we send the goods from here, the member countries charge for receiving those goods. 
whereas we charge to our customers which is the PG residents. So in this way we have the old rates with the, all the uh, our customers. We have not increased our prices since long and that's where we are losing our money as well. Corporal Miller's Fiji is working on reducing the import of vegetable oil. In line with this, a de-husking machine, de-shelling and a hot air dryer was commissioned in Savu Savu yesterday. Minister for Agriculture Dr. Mahendra Reddy says the new machines will assist in producing food grade coconut oil for consumption that will be sold in local markets. Dr. Reddy says Fiji imports 17,000 tons of vegetable oil worth $20 million annually and this initiative will help reduce the imports by 5%. Coming up, Fiji 7s help Aussie side prepare for Oceania 7s and Vikings to host Ndrua in NRC semis. Stay with us. Bula. Welcome back. Japan coach Jamie Joseph has talked a lot about his side gaining respect, but after their win over Scotland, there is a new conversation starting. There's a big debate now whether Japan should be included as a Tier 1 nation, and it appears they have found some support in the All Blacks. More from TVNZ. Just like the rest of the rugby world, the All Blacks admit they can't help but admire Japan's heroes, even weighing in on the debate to make Japan a Tier 1 nation. Oh, without a doubt, they'd have to be considered like they're playing and performing like a Tier 1 nation. Yeah, it was probably uh, the most players we've all had in the team room watching a game of rugby this tournament. There was a chance the All Blacks would play their quarterfinal against Japan, but unexpectedly topping Pool A, the Brave Blossoms instead sent second-placed Ireland on a collision course course with the world champions, a promoter's dream given their recent history. A lot of people are getting caught up in, in the past, it's about what's going to happen on Saturday that's going to matter. As a team we're in a good place, um, but yeah, we're going to have to be uh, right near our best uh, this weekend. But at this World Cup, Ireland are yet to prove they are still the same team that defeated the All Blacks twice in their last three encounters. Although the All Blacks haven't forgotten November's Dublin disaster, a motivating factor in a week disrupted by a typhoon. Okay a week off is not a bad thing. It's allowed us to work really hard Friday. Uh, GPS numbers were equivalent or just above what a normal test match would be. A week where all the intensity ramps up. The team have been getting around the Barrett brothers who yesterday sadly lost their grandfather. Through him the Barretts have a proud Irish heritage and this week's opponents provide a fitting opportunity for his grandkids to pay tribute. The All Blacks were starstruck as they took a quick detour in, betu in between World Cup preparations to hang out with NBA stars. Several players, including Sam Whitelock, TJ Perinara and Adi Savea, were pictured with Houston Rockets players as the NBA side trained in Tokyo during their preseason tour in Japan. The All Blacks took to social media to thank the Rockets for their hospitality at training camp. Meanwhile, the All Blacks will meet Ireland at 10.15 p.m. this Saturday for their quarterfinal matchup. Unbelievable, like, seeing guys that I just uh, love watching on TV and uh, talk to these guys in the flesh and how they do their thing. And they don't miss, so eh? It's amazing. Westbrook's right up there for me, like, the athleticism that he shows and the, you know, the ferocity he plays at is something that's really impressive, so um, see a guy like him in the flesh, uh, it's pretty cool. Australia 7's coach Tim Walsh says it's exciting to have his side come to Fiji early to prepare for the Oceania 7's. Walsh adds they take preparations seriously as an Olympic qualification spot is in contention as well as the Oceania 7's. Walsh says playing Fiji, Walsh rather, says playing Fiji has helped his side adapt to our offloading style of play. Um, certainly the offload game, the support game is, is the best in the world but then your big boys that can powerful run through and that's where the offloading comes from, from a powerful run. So we've got to make our, make our tackles and then 
um, from that you can possibly look at getting in a, getting in a channel or, or looking at getting a getting a turnover. There there is that that side of it, you know. And when you do play Fiji, you got to be watching out for the for the offloads. Um, but it's easier easier said than done. Australia and Fiji are in camp with the Oceania Sevens to be played on the 7th and 8th of next month. Fiji is pooled with New Zealand, Japan, New Caledonia and Niue in Pool A, while Australia is in Pool C with Tonga, Nauru, American Samoa and Vanuatu. It will be do or die for the Fiji Airways Ndrua as they defend their National Rugby Championship title in the semi-finals against the Canberra Vikings this week. Coming off a narrow 26-24 win last weekend against Queensland Country, the Serivakula coached side will look to work on mistakes. The Ndrua and the Vikings met in last year's semi-final, but tables turned earlier this year when the Vikings beat the Ndrua 41-28 in round five. The Vikings will look to expose the Ndrua's discipline as they also have the home advantage this week. The Ndrua will face the Vikings at 4 p.m. this Sunday, while Western Force will take on Brisbane City in the first semi-final at 4 p.m. this Saturday. A heavy rain alert is in force for Yasawa and Mamanuda Group, western half of Viti Levu, Kandavu and nearby smaller islands. A trough of low pressure with associated cloud and showers lies just to the west of Fiji. It's expected to approach the group from the west from later today. Forecast Yasawa and Mamanuda Group, western half of Viti Levu, Kandavu and nearby smaller islands will see occasional showers and few thunderstorms. Showers increasing to rain, becoming frequent and heavy from later tonight. And that's your FBC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form. I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Akereta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.